Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of Vambrace Cold Soul. It is by Dev Espresso Games and Head Up Games and releases tomorrow, May 28th, 2019. So, you guys will be able to grab it if you like what you see. I am going to be playing it for the very first time right here right now and it looks like it's gonna be really interesting it's from the same folks that brought us uh, the coma if you guys remember that i played that i want to say two or three halloweens ago and it was, it was pretty enjoyable so let's click a slot and let's begin oh well that doesn't sound healthy at all oh that's interesting okay so i i, I mean i could speculate what the game is going to be kind of like but I, I don't really want to because <laughs> I'd rather just see how it plays out and see how the game is as opposed to making wrong assumptions at this point. So, Private Briggs alright, this is the place I told you guys about looks like the spooks got here first was it really worth leaving our regular path to come all this way out here? it does look like I can use a controller if I wanted to I think I'm going to go with the keyboard and mouse for now we'll see, maybe I'll switch to the controller down the road we're not patrolling today. Besides, if we don't find more supplies soon, we're all about to be in trouble. Have you got a better suggestion? Um, I'm not the one that will have to tell Celeste we came back empty-handed. Shut your pie holes. Who knows what's lurking about up here? Just look around and see if you can find anything useful. I know, it's a woman. It's, it's fine. Check out the tutorial graphic above and move out. Oh, oh okay. Ah, there it is. Your character can move left and right on the field. The command box on the bottom left displays your interactive options with the environment around you. Okay. Uh, the command box on the bottom right displays the inventory, bio, codex, and map options. All right, fair enough. The inventory displays the items in your or that your team is currently carrying. The map displays your current location, destination, and field encounters. The bio displays your team members' stats, skills, status effects, and equipped relics. Cool. Okay. Uh, I guess we can walk to the left. It doesn't look like we can interact, so stuff's going to pop up down here when we're able to do stuff. Hey, my progress was saved. A door. Oh, I can hit spacebar. Sweet. Is it locked? Open it already. Keep your guard up. Oh, dear God. Um... Interaction icons represent a variety of ways you can engage with the environment around you. A red X on the interaction icon means that you can neither access the area nor engage with the object. You'll need to hold the interact button to complete your action with certain objects. Alright. I guess we shall walk over to the door. And it does look like it's spacebar as the interact option. I thought we were going to have stuff down here. I could be wrong. I wonder what that is. Okay. We can't interact with that. There's a box. I found something. Looks like a chest of some sort. Well, what are you waiting for? Okay, here goes. I forgot how to open it. Uh, what? Oh, all mother, help me. It's a miracle I've survived this long in the company of fools. Just press and hold the button indicated in the tutorial graphic and voila! It's usually a good idea to have someone with a high slight stat in your team to do the dirty work. Uh, okay. Containers like this may hold valuable loot. The character who has high slight will have a chance of opening the chest and finding loot. Scavengers with low slight may have difficulty opening chests and will often find less loot. Aww. Well, that's sad. I don't want to know. All right. Do we have anybody with a high slight stat? Seven, one, and one. We do. It's going to be the Sarge. Must hold it and blammo. Move aside and leave it to me. All right. Uh, one man's junk is another man's treasure. It weighs two pounds, junk, more junk, and scrap metal. All right. What are these? I guess grab one and then this is grab all. I wonder what the grab all button is. Is it E? Nope. Is it space bar? I'm just going to click it for now until I can figure it out later. The chests here are different from the ones back in Adena. 
or Edena? Eh. Forget the chest. Try checking your inventory and character bios as indicated in the bottom right corner of the screen. All right. Well, this is your team's inventory. Cool. The skull icon represents Hellion. Uh, okay, the currency used to buy and sell items. The scale icon rep represents capacity and indicates how much your team can carry before suffering the overweight debuff. Each section of your inventory categorizes items by the same type. Most items can be sold to merchants or removed from your inventory. However, quest items will remain with you always. Relics represented by the diamond icon may be equipped to improve stats or upgrade skills. Some quest items may also be equipped. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Cool, 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 cool. Uh-huh, I guess I'm just gonna click. Alright, we got ourselves some scrap metal. We got ourselves some rope and thread. Survival gear, alright, cool, 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 cool. And some junk. And we got this. The Scroll of Consent provides uh, Zachward's uh, consent to move about freely in uh, Deli Arch and to the surface. This gives me uh, autonomy to move between uh, Deli Arch and Isenair. I'm sure I'm butchering these names and places, guys and girls. I do apologize for that, but let us read all about our bios. This is the bio. Learn more about your team's, your team members' stats, skills, status effects, and equipped relics here. Press left or right to toggle between characters in your team. The heart icon indicates health. The flame icon indicates a vigor or a vigor. No, it's a vigor. The sword icon indicates combat and represents a character's prowess at fighting. The lockpick icon indicates slight and represents a character's ability to scavenge. The stars icon indicates merchantry. Sure. It represents a character's ability to negotiate with merch hands. The eye icon indicates awareness, represents the individual's ability to spot traps. The party's success is determined by the ally with the highest of ratings in such a thing as awareness. The tent icon indicates overwatch and represents the character's ability to care for the party while camping. Combat skills can be performed while fighting. Normal skills are your character's default abilities. The flourish skill can only be used once. It has been charged with flourish points. All right. This section displays your party's equipment. You can check the value and benefit of equipping various relics here. Use the formation button to change the arrangement of your team members. All right. And finally, you may need to dismiss a party member to recruit new comrades. Well, that sounds terrible. Oh, there's all sorts of things going on here. An experienced fighter hardened by dangerous expeditions around the world. So he's got three, one, zero, two, and two. Uh, two, not quite as good. Private Wedge is not as good as Private Briggs. An experienced fighter has the same thing. One, one, two, and two. So he's a little bit better to deal with a merchants. And then a saboteur who excels at reconnaissance missions where the stakes are high. For combat, she's better than both of the privates. Uh, some sleight of handing. She's good at merchant dealing. She can see very... She's really good, basically. Thrust and flying shuriken. We have deal four true damage, two to mid, blah, blah, blah. Strike, whirlwind and strike. And we got prey and strike. Can heal himself. All right, cool. And, uh, you know, I think that's fine. I'm seeing nothing happening. I'm going to continue on to the right. Uh, it's freezing out here. You think the spooks are getting close? Uh, did you forget to bring the geistometer again? Or the geistometer, if you prefer? We should keep going. Use going back the way we came if they are... Stay put for too long and they'll catch up. Remember, if your health or vigor drops to zero, we'll be the ones spooking this place. Let's go. I feel uneasy. This place gives me the creeps. Okay. The red bar on the character HUD displays health. If a character's health drops, yep. Damage to health is usually incurred during combat. Yep, makes sense. The yellow bar is the vigor. A character will also die if it drops to zero. Oh, well, that's super fantastic. Damage to vigor is usually incurred through stress of exploration. Well, that's fantastic. What about the blue bar? You gain flourish points through critical action bonuses and finishing turns during combat. Accumulating enough will activate 
your flourish. All right. Sounds terrible. What is this? Why do you have a controller there? Ah! It's an infrasonic totem. You spring a trap that spreads infras... Oh, good. Infra... Infrasonic waves causing you a strange tension. Health is reduced by two, and we now have hand tremors. Oh, well, that's super fantastic. Well, she did avoid it because she's awesome. Careful, this path is dangerous. Oh, did she avoid everything? Another trap. Best to have someone with high awareness stat on your team to avoid them. Like me. You tell him, Sarge. Traps are a dangerous feature in Isendair. Isendair? Asenier? I got nothing. Isenair, your party leader or the entire team could incur damage from an activated trap. Characters with a high awareness will warn your party of an imminent dangers and allow you to avoid unsuspected or unexpected casualties from traps. Characters with low awareness will trigger traps more easily. Do 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 tip toed. I have noticed it. Do 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 do. Oh my leg! I lo I love the little drawings. They're so good. Uh, some actions have a probability of failure when you uh, see this green script. It means your attempt was a success. The red script means that the action failed and you will incur a penalty. The gray script means you missed and the enemy has evaded your attack. Oh. The blue script means that you scored a critical and your actions effects have been maximized. Cool. Uh, I, I guess we were a success. I just saw something move in the distance. Get your weapons ready and think fast. Let's make sure we all get home today. Oh, I'm ready. Whoa. Oh, do you see those dudes run up on us? Alright. Alright, let's see what you get. We have encountered hostile enemies. Your team is located on the left. That's good to know. And the enemy's team is positioned on the right. Each team has four slots rising in value from the center. Okay. The team's character HUDs have slot icons denoting their space. Sure. All over it. The bottom bar displays turn order using the character HUD slot icons. A higher awareness gives a character an advantage and in initiative. If two characters have the same awareness, the one positioned in front will get the initiative. Makes sense. The character's icon reaches this point. It is his or her turn to take action. Normal skills are your character's default abilities. The Flourish is powerful, but needs to be charged by accumulating Flourish points. Using Guard helps your characters defend themselves at the cost of one vigor. It is a useful way to defend against powerful enemy Flourishes. You may even get a Flourish point. Your character may also pass their turn. You cannot use items or change relics during combat. However, you may check the map and bio for the benefit of planning your next move. Okay. Interesting. Formation allows you to rearrange your team in the heat of combat. Runaway is also a good option for avoiding combat. These colors don't run. I don't know about that. They might run. All right, so we've got ourselves this skill. There are three range types for every skill. Short range, mid range, and long range. Short range skills are only available while positioned in the first or second slot and can only target enemies in the first or second slot. Mid-range skills can be used in any position, but can only target the first or second slot enemies. Long-range can be in any position and can target any enemy position. If an enemy is cleared from the first slot, the closest enemy in any position will then occupy that vacant slot. Makes sense. Choose your target. Your target reticle is visible on the enemy. Ah, okay. Just whomever, whomever we wish to kill. I don't know anything about our enemies right now, which is kind of sad. I also can't even see our enemy, so... Uh, I mean, I, I guess we'll try to burn the front guy. We hit him with a snowball. Oh, no. Oh, we just flat out murdered him. All right, well, maybe that was... Uh, okay. All right, I think we're going to go with... Um, uh, I, I, I kind of wish I didn't have my controller plugged in right now because I would be able to use hotkeys. But that's not the case, so... I probably should have defended. Hindsight being what it is. That's not even really hindsight. We've almost killed him. Oh, wait. Oh, no. We get to move. Oh, okay. That's cool. What is this? Oh, we hit them both. All right. I I'm willing to do that. Okay. Let's go. Let's do it. 
double stab. And we got them both. What? No damage done. We used our flourish point like a boss. And we took care of business. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Well, that's really loud music there. It's all right, though. Do we get to loot them? I feel like we should be able to loot them or get experience or, or was there... Hmm. I told you guys I had a bad feeling about this place. You're the one that insisted we come out here to begin with. By all means, continue quarreling amongst yourselves if you want to be ice pops. We have the spoils we came for, and it's colder than a... <laughs> it's cold out here. Uh, I, for one, am ready to return. Hold up, guys. I see a body. Looks like a girl. Why'd you say it all creepy like that, man? Who is it? She's shiny. Uh, mm -hmm. She's not from Daily Arch. Um, I don't recognize her, and no other scavenging teams came up today either. Well, we can't help her now. Search the body. Seriously? You search her. Wait, she's still breathing. Stop searching people. We should help her. Who knows how long she's been out here. You want to bring her back? Are you mad? We have no clue who she is. She could be with the green flame for all we know. She doesn't look like one of them. We can't risk compromising Deli Arch's location. Celeste will have our heads. And what if she knows how to cast that strange magic? We don't have to worry about that. She's unconscious. Captain Lanville shall decide her fate. Looks like she, this is your lucky day, girl. Strange visitor. All right. Well, we're figuring it out. I once read a man would have to go below the waves to understand the true scale of an iceberg. Reminds me of you, dear father. I confess I never really knew you. After all, how does one get the measure of a man when there's so much beneath the surface? Nevertheless, I owe my survival of Zumurud's blistering deserts and the wild forests of Sylvia to your training. When I was summoned home to Edina, in order to read your last will and testament, I didn't know what to expect. I suppose it comes as no surprise you remained a mystery even in death. I now find myself beckoned to the dwarven realm of Darkheim by the encrypted journal and ancient relic you left behind on an expedition to the cursed city of Isenair for answers you never provided. I shall not be daunted. My determination is equal to the task at hand. If, as you say, this Vambrace is the key to entering that forbidden city. I will find what I seek. My journey has been difficult. Since the Vambrace entered my possession, I have been plagued by unsettling dreams of a ghostly blade cutting me down. Seems bad. Also, I feel like she's not doing so well considering she was passed out laying on the ground. Chapter 1, The Adventurer... Adventuress. Excuse me. So she's got a pickaxe. Uh, basically a gauntlet with Vambrace attached to it. So that's a thing. And yeah, she's just laying there unconscious with her two-tone eyes. <coughs> uh, my head... Glad you could join us, Sleeping Beauty. Stop, stop, stop hitting on her, man. She just woke up. She doesn't need you saying she's, you know, it's fine. Who are you? Let's make this clear. I'm the one asking questions here. You can start with your name, beautiful. Uh, look, my name is Lyric. Avelia Lyric. You need to, like, calm down, man. I know it's cold, but, you know, just, just chill out a little bit. I am Lanville Esquire. You're lucky we found you. A moment later, and you'd be another piece of frozen decor gracing the streets. I must have fainted. I've never felt a chill like that before. We are, unfortunately, well acquainted with it here. Celeste had half a mind to leave you up there. Good for you. She's not calling the shots, and I was feeling generous. Up there? So we're underground. Looks like I've got a sharp one on my hands. I took the liberty of searching your stuff. 
A bunch of climbing gear and a strange book nobody can read. Explain. Look, I came seeking answers about my father, the late Dr. Nicolau Lyric. Sure, I traveled here from Athena with his journal. Right, everyone knows nobody goes in and nobody ever comes out of Isenair. Isenair, you mean I'm here? I actually made it inside the city? Suppose for a moment I entertained your absurd story. How the heck did you get past the Frostfell? That barrier around the city? I, w I walked through it. Enough of this nonsense. You think I haven't seen what happens when someone touches it? It's instant death. The only freaks wandering about the surface are either spooks, mad survivors, or the green flame. You're not dead, and as far as I can tell, you are still sane. So let's cut through the crap. What's your connection with the green flame? I don't know them. The green what? Green flame. The Arconic cult hell-bent on destroying the Guardian Alliance? Ring any bells, or have you been living under a rock? Do I get any, like, contextual... Ooh, no, I don't. They're the ones responsible for this frozen curse? I can assure you I'm not with them. I, I literally just got here. You're serious, aren't you? Well, imagine my surprise to learn some Ideni... Ideni? Edeni? Eden, I, I didn't, decided to take a leisure stroll on the surface. Listen, I have a matter of great urgency. I'm looking for an individual named Zarquad. Do you know of him? Heh, <laughs> there's nothing left for us to discuss right now. But I am feeling gracious today, so tell you what, I'm giving you tentative permission to move about a deli arch. Until I figure out what to do with you, that is. So, what are you doing later, two eyes? Excuse me? Deli arch? Oh, that's the name of our lovely abode deep below Isenair. Welcome to paradise. You're you're just letting me go. There's nowhere to run, so you'd best make yourself at home. In fact, take this. You'll need some if you want to survive down here. What's this? We call it Hellion, and it's the only currency worth anything down here. Consider it a little welcome gift. I've I've never seen paper money. Try anything funny, and you're dead. In a cell, or right back on the surface where we found you. Are we clear? Crystal. Uh-huh. 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 Well, ladies... Our progress has been saved. You know what? I'm going to break it off here. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this first episode. A little tease, if you will, to kind of get your appetite whetted. And get you guys excited to see what the game is all about. And maybe, you know, you guys can go grab it yourself, play it, and, and be amazed and, and enjoy it. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I love the fact that there's, like, a, an actual storyline, a narrative, and not just, hey, go randomly kill a bunch of stuff and, and, and do battle and wander through a dungeon for no reason. This is a, a really good idea. That being said, I guess we'll break off the episode here. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, the publisher, any of the wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video, as it always is, and various links and things of that nature. You know the score, all the YouTube stuff. Do it, don't do it, doesn't matter. Enjoy your time here. Until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show, and I'll see you later. <laughs>